Welcome everyone to Dead Talk Live, and tonight we have a very special guest with us, Chandler Riggs, who we all know, of course, as Carl Grimes from The Walking Dead. Chandler, thank you so much for being here tonight. How are you doing? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Doing great. Thank you. It is my pleasure, and I know a lot of people are excited about this chat. And uh, I tried researching this online. It was made really big news that you were going to college after high school and you got accepted to several universities, but I could never find out. Did you actually go to college? And if you did, which one did you go to? Yeah, my, uh, you know, my, my plan was to actually go to the University of Georgia since, um, you know, my, my mom went to UGA and I am from Georgia myself. So it was, it was actually the, like the, one of the closer colleges that I could go to while being on The Walking Dead at the same time. So I uh, was kind of hoping to do that and do the show at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I, um, you know, got my dorm, I got everything, all my classes set up and everything. And then I found out that my character wasn't going to be on The Walking Dead anymore. So I kind of decided to switch gears and try to move out to LA and try to further pursue acting and kind of ride off of the you know the wave of the walking dead mm -hmm. and um you know try to land something else so yeah i didn't end up, ended up not going to to school i figured a degree in sociology probably that's what i would have majored and probably wouldn't get me very far in the world of acting <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's absolutely true now i know while you're in high school and you're on a tv production they have tutors that come and help you out with schoolwork. Uh, you know, when it comes to college, I, I would assume that would be a whole different ball game. If you had gone to college, and let's say, and you remained on The Walking Dead, I assume that would have been all like virtual classes and stuff, correct? It, yeah, it looked like it was going to be a most mostly actually in-person classes with maybe one or two virtual classes because when i was in high school and on the walking dead i i would only miss classes in the first semester and my teachers were understanding they knew that i wasn't just skipping school they knew mm -hmm. that i was going to work and they were all you know pretty cooperative and willing to work with me so um and they knew that i was getting all my work done and all that stuff so i figured that if i'm you know taking college level classes in high school and these teachers are acting you know this cool about it then i am hoping that professors at college would kind of be the same way exactly um but yeah yeah so that's I, and i kind of just planned on commuting back and forth between the show and school and just you know try it out and see how it goes if it works that's great if it doesn't then you know it is what it is but now your career started from a very very young age would you say it was your inclination that pulled you towards entertainment or would you say it was more your parents influence uh which of the two was the greater force a little bit of both my parents kind of exposed me to it a little bit with uh, my my mom is super into theater she runs her own theater company and uh my dad not as much he, he has kind of he has a little bit of stage fright but he um he is in a band and he does he, he loves performing so i got a little bit of taste of that when i was a lot younger like three or four and my parents would have to bring me to rehearsals and stuff like that and i just really wanted to be on stage and kind of just went from there. I booked a couple of things in theater. I went in to do some commercials here and there, got an agent, a couple of uh, small movies, and then Walking Dead. Now, leading to The Walking Dead, you had met Gail Ann Hurd on a TV movie called The Wrong Man. She was uh, the executive producer. Is that how you got the audition? Did you audition for the role of Carl Grimes on The Walking Dead? because you having worked with Gail Ann in the past. Yeah, honestly, I it was just a random stroke of luck. Um, I got the audition as any other actor in Atlanta, you know, at 10, um, would get the audition. And I sent in another tape for a callback. And then they called me in to do an in-person audition. And that's where I saw Gail again. But... Um, I don't know. I like to think that it probably had, you know, her being a part of The Walking Dead and The Wronged Man probably had some sort of, uh, probably, you know, made my chances a lot better. 
But um, yeah, no, I still auditioned for it and still had to, you know, go up against a bunch of other, you know, 10 year old kids in Atlanta. Wow. And you being a Georgia native living in Atlanta and now Atlanta is just such a huge uh, movie television filming spot. How does that make you feel about your home state? It's great. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's super, super cool seeing so many people from Georgia work in the industry and to meet other people in the industry who are also from Georgia. It's really cool to, um, to, to kind of feel that it's awesome. And it's great because whenever I have a project that films in Georgia, I get to go back and hang out with my family and it's uh, hang out with all my old friends. So it's, it's not too bad. That's awesome. Now, you know, you said you moved out to LA to further pursue your acting career. I mean, knowing that Atlanta and Georgia are such huge hotspots, would you recommend to others to, if they really want to pursue acting, to go to L.A.? Or is Georgia like the new L.A.? Well, I think that in everywhere outside of L.A. is where everything films, right? Mm -hmm. However, I feel like a lot of things cast out of L.A. So, I mean, me personally, I feel like I have a better shot landing like... You know those series regular roles or those lead roles if um if i'm in la and i can go in person to an audition and leave a good impression versus if i'm just sending in a tape from anywhere else but i mean that's not to say that that can't lead to something big i mean that's how i got cast on walking dead just as a local so yeah. you really never know with anywhere you are or um anything you're auditioning for now looking back all right uh your time on The Walking Dead, you spent eight plus seasons on that show from the very beginning till halfway through season eight. Looking back now, you're 22, I believe, uh, and your career, do you feel from such a young age, being on such a hugely popular show and playing a very huge fan favorite in that show, do you feel for the long run, has it helped or hurt your career going forward? Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, could, do you mind saying that one more time? Has, has uh, uh... Basically being uh, from a young age and landing on The Walking Dead, which is, became a huge show, all right? Uh, 15 to 20 million viewers per week at its peak. You being a huge fan favorite on that show. Uh, looking back now... And looking forward into the future uh, in regards to your career, do you think uh, getting that role and being in it for so long has helped or potentially hurt your career moving forward? I understand. Sorry, sorry about that. No, no. Um, no, I, I think it is. It is. It's put my name on the map, which is more than I could ever, ever ask for. You know, it's, it's. I, I got like the luckiest gig of, of a lifetime. I mean, you know, career stuff aside, like having the experience of growing up on a set around so many incredible people, cast and crew, it's um, uh, an unforgettable experience that I will cherish like forever. <laughs> and uh, but career wise, I think it's um, it's it's made it harder in some areas of you know, of being typecasted, mm -hmm. but it's also made it better because it's opened up so many doors that I never would have had otherwise. Yeah. So um, ultimately, I feel like the good outweighs the bad. That's true. Now, entertainment is a brutal business. I mean, you got to really have a passion to endure all the stuff that goes on within entertainment. Given the opportunity, if yourself today, 22-year-old Chandler Riggs can go and talk to your 11 year old self back in 2010, what would be the main thing you would want to get across to yourself? Oh man, I honestly, I feel like, you know, I, I went back and rewatched some old like scenes and episodes and I was like, man, I really wish I just like paid attention to the other, the other actor and how they did, did stuff because the other actors, they're so good in so many cool scenes. And it's, uh, it, it makes me really wish that I had like not paid more attention, but um, asked more questions and learned more, you know, from, yeah. from the other actors there. Okay, that's fair. Season three is when the show really started to take off. Uh, it's also a season where we see Carl, your character, 
going through some big changes. There's animosity between Carl and Rick. Carl blames uh, Rick for the death of his mom, Laurie, and of course, just being a teenager and stuff like that. So this is sort of like a two-part question. As a 14-year-old teenager, how did you handle all the real-life attention you were getting from fans of the show? And the second part is, did you use... uh, you actually being a teenager at the time, the personal feelings that you were getting from your fans and your family and put that into the character of Carl? Well, uh, to to answer the first part to your question, you know, Walking Dead kind of, it snowballed over time. So it wasn't just like an instantaneous, like it wasn't like I was cast on the show at its peak. You know, I was, since I was there from the beginning, I was there when no one cared about it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I did I did conventions right off the bat from like I started doing going to conventions and appearances and whatnot, like in uh, November December of 2010, and you know it was no one really cared about The Walking Dead. I mean, there were you had like the those people that were diehard fans of the comics, but um, but outside of that, you know. It, everyone thought that a zombie TV show was never going to succeed and that, you know, no one cared about zombies at the time anyway. It was all about vampires and, and vampire diaries and Twilight. So um, getting to see it kind of like ramp up over time and be a really gradual thing, it was never, it never felt like I was like thrown into it or um, felt like I was overwhelmed because it was, it was such like a slow burn up. Um, then to answer the, your other question, I think, um, you know, the character kind of just became a part of me over time. I mean, when you start playing a character at 10 years old and you play him for years and years, it just becomes just second nature. And so everything that, you know, that you are kind of bleeds into the character and everything kind of just gets all muddy. So a lot of times I would use, yeah, things from my personal life as any other actor would um, to inflate certain performances that need to be inflated or um or vice versa you know there's a lot of a lot of things that i kind of you know tapped into to try and and make it better and more believable when you got cast for the role uh at such a young age who helped you understand you know the importance of carl grimes uh in the overall aspect of the show and the franchise were you allowed to read the comics? Were you allowed to read any of the source material? Did one of the producers, directors come and explain it to you? How did that work out? I was, uh, so when I got the audition for the show, I, my dad and I, we went to the local comic book store and picked up the first couple of volumes of The Walking Dead. So right off the bat, I knew that Carl was a really important character. And so when I landed the role, I was so so stoked because it was such a cool character like it was only you know 60 or 70 issues were out at the time but i was beyond excited like i i was it, it was i thought it was the coolest thing to get to play such a cool character and uh yeah no i i knew like before i started on the show that it was going to be uh, a pretty cool character i was really stoked I have had the privilege of talking somewhere between 25 to 30 members of the cast who have come and gone throughout the years. And they all say the the same thing. Uh, Great set to work on, family environment, very welcoming, led by Andrew Lincoln uh, for the majority of the time. For you personally, uh, was there anybody on the cast that really went out of their way to make you feel comfortable, make you understand, help you in any way? Was that Andrew or was it someone else? Yeah, I feel like Andy, because I had so many scenes with him, he was uh, just the the best like role model for me to have there on set of just someone coming up and and being like top to bottom prepared every day that he shows up. like. It, it just it blew me away how prepared that that dude was walking out to us that is crazy he he knew like every single word on the script for the whole week and he even knew my lines and everybody else's lines wow. and like all of the the like stage direction and and it was just it was crazy to 
to work with someone that was that into everything it was it was so so cool so yeah i definitely have to say andy he was um and he was always so engaged with my family and when i bring my friends to set you know he's just great just an all-around an incredible guy to work with and be around now the walking dead not being your first time on in front of a camera you had done uh shorts you had done a tv movie before that uh was coming on to that set uh, with that group of people not knowing what the future of this show and the odds were against you guys did you feel that very warm family connection really build up quickly yeah i mean kind of like kind of like you were saying it's just we didn't know how the you know the audience was going to react to it we didn't at the end of the first season we were all crying and hugging each other because we thought we were never going to see each other again you know it's just uh it, it was one of those things that that no one really knew if it would go anywhere and at the same time we were all you know pouring our heart and soul into every scene every moment because it demanded it you know we were there's very few other shows where you're out in the sun like all day long every single day for months at a time in the middle of the summer in georgia it's like the hottest thing imaginable oh, yeah. so to uh to work on a set like that and to be around to grow up around people like that absolutely connecting connected i had that like family type connection right off the bat your character when we first int were introduced to carl uh was eight okay you were actually 11 in real life so your ages were really close in real life compared to the character as your character progressed and it went into eight plus seasons did you find using you were finding that you were using a lot of your own real life experiences and pouring it into the character yeah well fortunately on the show we never really established like they never said Carl's age or like the, the you know his his birthday or anything like that, and that, I think that was intentional because um, they didn't want me to you know w come back one year and be like eight feet tall. You know what I mean? It's just like it's just a gamble that they had kind of had to take. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I absolutely like, like I was saying earlier, I, every growing up i mean i went to went to high school I, I lived like a normal life outside of the show and i think having that like being able to just go and hang out with friends after work after filming um i think that really really helped kind of shape you know myself and carl at the same time because i don't think carl would have would have that same just like um just like heavy mature feel that he had mm -hmm. if um if i hadn't had those experiences when i was younger now you you have done a lot of horror uh even outside of your time on the walking dead you have done quite a bit of horror uh going back to you know the wrong man and into the walking dead were you a fan of horror movies and horror television uh or were you just indifferent to it? And how did those feelings change once you got on the set of The Walking Dead? Well, I mean, I was I was 10 when I started on the show, so I I wouldn't <laughs> I think even if I liked horror movies, I didn't I don't think I would have even really knew yeah. what uh, what it was like, you know. So I my dad had showed me a couple of Frank Darabont films to kind of like be like, "Hey, this is the dude that you're working with. This is pretty cool." Um, but outside of that, I wouldn't say that I was a, a horror fan. And I, I wouldn't say that I'm a horror fan now because at the end of the day, The Walking Dead isn't really a horror show. You know, it, it is, it's classified like in categories and everything. It's categorized as a horror show, but I think it's, it's pretty far from horror at this point. It's, it's, it's all, it's always been about the, the human interactions and the drama and be like between interpersonal relationships. It's never about the horror i 100 percent agree you could have put it in like a big rat apocalypse and the world was being attacked by giant rats it doesn't matter the show has always been about the characters that's what made it special and uh the zombies are just what are there to put the characters in the situations that they are that they have to face uh throughout the walking dead you have seen many actors come and go whose departure left you feeling 
with that sense of loss? Was there anybody that you really missed after they left the show? Oh, man. Because there have been um, so I mean, many. Yeah, I, losing any any actor that had to leave the show was always pretty rough. But I think one of the hardest ones for me was when Sarah Wayne Callie is the woman who played Lori on the show. Yeah, when her when she had to leave the show, that was it was pretty rough just because my I, you know, for the last like three years, I had spent a lot of time with her. She had helped me with my homework. She had kind of like, you know, uh, I wouldn't wouldn't say parented, but she was uh, a, a great, you know, kind of like Andy, a great role model for me to have on on set. And so when she had to leave the show and it was and have it be a lot earlier than what I was anticipating, having read the comics, it was uh, that was pretty hard. But, you know, that's it's just the nature of the show. It's I mean, it has dead in the name of it. So you kind of have to assume that characters are going to die. <laughs> a huge part of The Walking Dead success is its ability to continue to shock viewers. And you can't overlook the fact the way that uh, Laurie, Sarah, left the show your character had to shoot her. Uh, and the way her departure was, it raised a lot of question marks. There was never a body found or anything like that. Do you know, uh, was there any kind of talk uh, in the way that she left the show? Was it ever open to her possibly coming back? Uh, or that was just the viewers looking into stuff that wasn't really there? Yeah, it's, I mean... It, most like off-screen deaths mean that they're that they're dead. I, I didn't find it really necessary for them to show her body, even if to just like prove to the viewers that she's dead. I I felt like that would kind of take away from the emotional impact from it in mm -hmm. the first place. So, um, yeah, no. Any any like hint of her coming back was her actually coming back as a as her like you know ghostly kind of version that rick was chasing around the prison when he was going all crazy so tell me what was your reaction when you read that script and it was carl that puts his own mom down how did you feel about that oh man i mean i was 12 so it was like it's a it's a very heavy thing for anyone to to have to do let alone a kid um and uh Man, I, I, to be honest, I, I I can't I can't remember even that much of like when I was reading the script, but it's just like, um, I just remember being just really bummed out about yeah. it, about her having to leave in the first place. You know, it's, it was less about the characters and what my character did; it was just her having to leave that was was really bumming me out. The show has always made it a point to show uh, the characters and the events that happen in those characters' lives that help them go on to the next level like for example you your character carl having to shoot your mom laurie on the show was a pivot moment for carl okay uh out of all the pivot moments that your character had to face throughout eight plus seasons which one do you believe was the most intense for the, your character carl to endure oh man uh and there, there were quite a few. I mean, like I said, season three was a big transformational season going on to season four. And then finally reconciling Carl with Rick. Yeah. You know, I think I think one of the most pivotal moments was um, that whole uh, the whole the whole pudding episode. <laughs> it's that, that's how everyone knows it as. But it's um it was uh, just such an incredible episode because oh, yeah. we um, it was like a staple comic. That whole episode was right out of the comics. And when we got to that episode and I, I was just I read page after page and it was just like just me, me, me. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a lot of work. And it was like my first my first week of freshman year of, at high school was that episode that we had to film and uh but it was really cool because my audition scene when i initially auditioned for the walking dead was in that episode and it would you know a ver a different completely different version of it but it was still like the same kind of stuff and it was just so so cool to get to um to get to play all that out again and to kind of have a 
full like arc from the start of the episode to the end of the episode that kind of cascaded into the rest of the entire character i mean the rest of the rest of carl is kind of built around the start uh, like or the, the end of that episode mm-hmm. is kind of when he um when he kind of grows up and matures and and becomes the you know the man he is for the rest of the series that monologue that you have while andy brick is passed out on the couch after being literally beaten to within inches of his life from david morrissey the governor and you know you dragged him you take him to the house and he's just passed out for days and you're talking to him and he's passed out that was such an intense performance by you it was amazing thank you you did a great job and that leads me to you had several great uh more than several scenes but another one that really stands out in my mind was in the episode the one before where you actually left where you're standing on top of the alexandria walls and you're talking to negan giving time for the Alexandrians to escape and you're basically buying time for them. And it's just you standing on top of that wall and Jeffrey down below Negan, and you give that emotional speech and his reaction to that speech was also very intense. Did you and Jeffrey kind of talk that out before you acted it out? Uh, Walk us through that sequence. Well, I mean, most of the scenes that we do, in, I mean, in general, are are kind of the, the same process. You know, some actors like to run the lines beforehand. Some actors like to just do it live. But I do remember going up to Jeffrey and being like, man, I think this is our last scene together. I'm like, man, this man, this sucks. Like, <laughs> having to do our last scene together because um, I know Jeffrey was really looking forward to a lot of the stuff that... Um, our characters had in the comics and knowing that we wouldn't be able to get to do that. He was kind of bummed out about it, but um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that emotion kind of ended up pouring out into the scene and just coming up in, in different ways because I mean, Carl and Negan did share this kind of weird yeah. bond, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, though they kind of were on opposite ends of things and Carl was stalling, he was still, it was just a last push of like, maybe I can, convince him to like put his guns down and like maybe we can all actually live in in peace and we here. Actually, maybe i can do this and we actually see that in the letter that carl writes to all the people because he knew he was dying he was bit he was living on borrowed time uh do you think those letters played a huge role in at the end of the savior war as to why rick spared negan's life absolutely i think that's that's 100 percent the reason that carl died in the first place was to push um you see you know i just gotta that pause you right there. i've been saying that for a year and a half now to my audience i'm like the only reason i can think that you know they the writers might have felt that they had to kill carl off the show because i mean you gotta understand the backlash that you know the backlash your death face i don't have to explain it to you and I'm like, the only thing I can think of is they had to give a plausible explanation as to why Rick would spare Negan after Rick witnessed what Negan had done to uh, Abraham and Glenn. So you agree 100% that is why. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I I don't know for sure. I don't, I, you know, haven't had a one-on-one with the with the writers about it because, you know, there's no point but um i kind of always assumed that that was that that was the reason that yeah because they made negan such a like a dislikable villain they needed something so drastic to get rick to not kill negan something as drastic as his son's dying wish exactly so exactly So you have had a chance to work with many directors uh, on your time on the show. The two prominent directors are, of course, Greg Nicotero and Michael Satrazimus. Uh, they are the ones back in the day who would flip-flop finales and premieres, uh, those two. Greg tends to lean more into the gore aspect. They're both great directors. Greg tends to lean more into the gore aspect of an episode, while Michael tends to lean more into the character storytelling uh of 
uh, of an episode without putting you on the spot, <laughs> which is the question is going to put you on the spot, and I apologize in advance. Which of those two styles, you know, did you feel more comfortable working with? Oh, I mean, I, I it, it's it's hard to say because, I mean, at the end of the day, the the directors are, um, you know. Having worked with both of them since the very start of the show, I mean, it's great. It's it's always, always great working with them. And we did have other directors that would come in on a regular basis that I also loved working like with. Like Rosemary Rodriguez. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Ernest Dickerson is another one who uh, was just incredible and so much fun to work with. But working with um, with Michael Satrazimus, uh was just so much fun because he had been there as a as a camera operator actually in the first season and then got bumped up to director of photography in some of the later seasons and then got to direct in season four so seeing him kind of go on to do so many awesome things and get to work with him it was just so much fun because he knew me and he knew how to like get me to do the things that he was envisioning so it was it was just super easy for us to work together and for him to direct me and um i actually got the chance over this over this past summer to shadow mikey while he was in austin texas yeah, he, shooting he, through he, the walking dead he told me uh, yeah that was pretty yeah cool. nice yeah, yeah, it was so much, so much fun. So getting to shadow him and and learn from him and see what he's and just pick his brain as, and see what he's what he's learned over the last. God, he's been doing this his whole life. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really, really cool to to see the other side of it. So yeah, working with Mikey is it, just it's great he, all around. But every everyone has, like I was saying, everyone has you know, their own things that make them really good at what they do. Exactly, exactly. And what I love about Mikey and respect the most is, you know, he's like, just focus on the content. You know, that's what he cares about. He cares about the final product. You know, everything else is just noise. Focus on the on the, on the content. Uh, since you took an interest in shattering him as a director, uh, is there any interest for you down the line in your career to go behind the camera and do some work there? Yeah, well... At the time, I was working on um, on developing a, a show of my own, but um, it's since fallen through. But yeah, I mean, I've I've absolutely had my interest spiked in directing and writing and producing. So I'm trying to get some stuff of my own off the ground here and there. Um, I'm also still auditioning for like a million things, like every week. So it's it's all um, pretty, you know. I'm I'm st I'm very much so staying very hands on in all aspects of the business. Awesome. Uh, now, going back to your death, if we can just touch on that for a little bit, like I said, the reaction there was a, a big backlash to your death. Uh, the show lost a lot of fans. My daughter being one of them. Your death was the last episode uh, she watched. What were some of the reactions you were getting personally through social media? Through social media in regards to Carl's passing? Same kind of thing that you're probably imagining me getting. I mean, it's the same, uh, you know, just people being devastated and heartbroken by the character. But um, it's 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 really sad. But at the same time, it 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 means that I did my job, which is you know is all that I can do is just do my job and do it well. And, you know, when people, when I get people reaching out to me and saying these things, it's, it means a lot because it means, yeah, that I, that I, that I succeeded in, Absolutely. in making the audience feel something and be connected to a character. Did it ever surprise you throughout the years, just how popular Carl became with the fans and how much of an inspiration your character and you were to the fans? Did, did that weigh on you as a responsibility in any way uh how did you handle it well people people forget that everyone well most most people that were fans of the show during like season two season three hated carl like i would get people come up to me at conventions saying man i hate your character you killed dale man like that is the worst and so yeah, so getting to go from a character that I would straight up get everyone saying that they hate me to go to a character that is more of a fan favorite and that people are excited to watch every week, it's it's really, really cool and um, a, a position that I, that I it's, it's just great. 
I love it. Every, every aspect of it, even 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 people hating my character. It's like I was saying earlier. It means that I'm doing my job. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Before that fateful meeting with uh, Scott Gimple, where he told you that Carl was going to be killed off, did you have this sort of false sense of ease that Carl was going to last a whole run of the show? Um. Yeah. I mean. I, having been been a fan of the comics, I was expecting it to kind of be there for the long run. Um, I had just taken care of contractual stuff uh, with, you know, with the network before the season. And um, I had, you know, college all set in stone. I had just bought a house down near the set. So I was, I had a, I had a pretty good setup for the next, for the next few years. Um, and then, you know, then I found out about it, but you know, it's, that's just how it is. It is it's just yeah. a part of the show. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was pretty bummed out at first, but it's being off the show has kind of allowed me to play other roles and connect with other audiences in ways that I never could have done on walking dead and get to be an actual, you know, feel like I'm, I can be an actual actor where I'm playing multiple different roles and I'm not just playing one character. So it's been it's been really, really fun these last few years. Now that several years have passed and, you know, everything has sort of quieted down, looking back at that time where you found out that Carl was going to be leaving and then that episode airing, how do you feel about how it all played out? Any regrets? Uh, there was a lot of media attention, a lot of writers weighed in, AMC, your camp. Uh, do you wish you could go back and things were done differently in terms of uh in terms of like the 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 writing of it like the well, uh, how the yeah, episode played basically, out no no not, not not the episode i mean that was done well uh you were given a great death and you were given a death where you basically well you knew you were dying and you sacrificed yourself to save your family which was the alexandrians uh, i'm talking about the media and of course you can't control the media but the the out the, the backlash, AMC, your camp. Uh, now that everything has settled down and you've had several years to absorb everything, uh, do you wish it was handled differently by AMC? Do you wish some of it might have been handled differently by your camp? Uh, or, you know, it is what it is. Let's just move on. Yeah, that's kind of the mentality I have towards it. I mean, um, it's, there are some sides to it that have specific point of views that, you know, I might always not agree with. So it's, it's just, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's been like four years yeah. since then. So I don't, I don't like to, to dwell on things that long ago and, and, and worry about that kind of thing. So I'm really not, I'm, uh, you know, just more focused on like how to now. kind of, yeah, exactly, on, on kind of moving forward and doing other projects and expanding and um, not really kind of keeping myself in a box. So let's talk about your death dinner. Um, you know, the, the infamous Walking Dead death dinners that the cast gives when, you know, fellow cast members go away. Did you get a pretty good uh, death dinner? Did they celebrate giving you a good going away party? Yeah, it was, it was just... Um, man it was so sad like i uh we we had it at my at my house and my mom had gotten like a, a catering service together so um yeah it was just like everyone like had something to say about you know how they felt about my time on the show and me leaving and everything and, uh, and it was just like yeah it was pretty sad so um have you kept yeah, in touch? There's not much else to say about it. Have you kept in touch with uh, you know some of the cast members and crew and whatnot? Yeah, I, I get to see a bunch of the other cast members at conventions here and there, and um, my my roommate is um, is Caitlin, the girl who played Enid in Walking Dead. My roommate is her boyfriend, so oh. she's over at at my house all the time wow <laughs> so it's it's um it's never I, I always get to to hang out with some of the people from from the set it's never too bad that is so so cool now a lot of actors when they leave a role they sort of stop following the series a lot of them have told me that it's sort of their way to break away and move on to different characters is that true with you did you stop watching the walking dead after you left the show uh or did you continue watching it 
after you were gone? Well, I was the biggest fan of the show while I was like while I was on the show. I think I I think I watched the show and was like really religious about it and keeping up with the comics and everything while I was on the show more so than anyone else on the cast and and crew and everyone. So um, even when I left the show, I I've, I've been keeping up with it. I, I haven't seen season 10 or 11 yet, but I've seen up through season nine and I was waiting to binge it on, on Netflix. So it's out and it's waiting. I just got to find some time to sit down and watch the whole season, but I try to keep up with it because, you know, I get questions like this of, of if I keep still keep up with the show and I would love to say yes, that I've seen every episode I'm up to date, but I haven't yet. I am planning on doing it though, because at the end of the day, I do love the show. It's a great show. And what a lot of people don't know is that when you're in entertainment, the time that you have to enjoy entertainment is greatly reduced. <laughs> yeah. There's just no time to just sit back and watch something that you want to watch. Uh, so moving forward now, uh, what is your goal uh, in regards to your career? Uh, do you want to strictly concentrate on acting? You said you tried getting a couple of projects and uh, trying to get a couple of projects off the ground. What is your like immediate near term goal? Honestly, just to um, to get some, get something off the ground, whether it's acting related or writing related or directing related, anything. Um, I have a few a few things in the works, so I'm trying to get any of them off the ground. My 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 end goal is always to you know play a part in a story that um that an uh, the audience can and uh, an audience any audience can connect to and relate to and um distract themselves with and um help them in some way with whatever it is that they're going through i recently got the chance to play a character with struggling with depression and anxiety and all this stuff so getting to kind of tackle that and help people going through that to give a character that people can relate to it, incredible it's so so it's it's an it's an amazing feeling and it's something that i'm constantly constantly chasing after do you want to continue uh on tv or you, know, you would do you want to do more films what would be your preference if there is a preference i'm doing anything that comes my way yeah i prefer to i prefer television more just because it's um you get the chance to have a longer run for something you get the chance to really um flesh out your character and let it develop and um become better over time well i feel like a movie is a little bit more limited in scope but still accomplishing the same thing so yeah that's kind of why i'm saying just anything that comes my way is, awesome. is uh yeah, yeah yeah chandler you have a bright future ahead of you you're a talented you. actor you have given us some of the best moments that will live well beyond our time on The Walking Dead for generations to come. Thank you so much for your portrayal of Carl Grimes. I mean, I just can't say enough uh, on the work that you did. So just thank you so much. Before we go, are there any final thoughts you want to share with our audience? Just thank you guys for, for being a part of the ride this whole time, for supporting me, for um for you know just being being there every step of the way if, if it weren't for you guys i wouldn't have a job so you know thanks to you for watching every episode and and sticking with it sticking with all my projects it's really really cool and i cannot thank you enough well, your fans love you you're awesome thank you so much you. i want to thank chandler riggs for being our guest tonight i want to thank our audience for tuning in we had a nice big crowd tonight on behalf of Chandler and myself, stay safe, have a great weekend, and stay walking. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night, guys.